Hi friends, so welcome to all. In this video, we are going to see the packet tracer activity examining a redundant design. Here is our objectives of this packet tracer activity. Uh, in part 1, uh, check for STP convergence. In part 2, examine the ARP process. And in part 3, uh, test redundancy in a switched network. We will uh, go through the background. In this activity, we will observe how STP operates by default and how it reacts when faults occur. Right. Switches have been added to the network out of the box. Cisco switches can be connected to a network without any additional action required by the network administrator. For the purpose of this activity, the bridge priority was modified. Right. Coming to uh, part 2 one, check for STP convergence. Uh, when STP is fully converged, the following conditions exist. All PCs have green link lights on the switched ports. Access layer switches have one forwarding uplink, that is green link, to a distribution layer switch and a blocking uplink, that is amber link, to a second distribution layer switch. And distribution layer switches have one forwarding uplink, that is green link, to a core layer switch and a blocking uplink, that is amber link, to another core layer switch. Coming to the topology, here we can see all the PCs uh, have green link lights on the switched ports. Also here we can see access layer switches, that is A1, A2 till A6, uh, have one forwarding uplinks, yes here we can see that. Also, we can see uh, a blocking uplink that is unburling to a second distribution layer switch. Yes. So, A2, here we can see that. Also, here we can see distribution layer switches have one forwarding uplink. Uh, here we can see uh, to the core layer. Yes. And uh, a blocking uplink that is unburling to another core layer switch. Yes, here we can see that. D2, here we can see that uplink and here is the downlink. D3, here we can see the uplink and here is the downlink. Now we will come to uh, part 2, examine the ARP process. Uh, step 1, uh, switch to simulation mode. Step 2, uh, ping from PC 1 to PC 6. Right, so we will do that. Here is the instruction for that. Uh, use the add symbol PDU tool to create a PDU from PC1 to PC6, verify that ARP and ICMP are selected in the event list filters. Click capture or forward to examine the ARP process as the switch network learns the MAC addresses of PC1 and PC6. Notice that all possible loops are stopped by blocking ports. For example, the ARP request from PC1 travels from A1 to D2 to C1, to D1, and then back to A1. However, because STP is blocking the link between A1 and D1, no loop occurs. Coming to the topology, we will uh, switch from uh, real-time mode to the simulation mode. Yes, here we can see that. And uh, coming to our event list, here we can see uh, the visible events are ARP and ICMP, right? So now here we are going to select this add symbol PDU and we are going to send from PC1 to PC6. Yes, here we can see the PDUs uh, that is the ARP and uh, ICMP. Here now we are going to click the capture or forward. It goes to A1, the ARP goes to A1, right? Capture or forward it goes to D2. Capture or forward here we can see that. Yes, it goes to A2, A3, and C1. Capture or forward broadcasting. Yes, capture or forward. Capture or forward. Yes, it goes to PC6 also. Right. Capture or forward, yes, that ARP uh, goes back to uh, PC1. Capture or forward, capture or forward, 
again we will give goes to d2 a1 and coming to pc1 yes now we are going to click again capture or forward so now here we can see uh, the pdu is uh, icmp capture or forward yes capture or forward it goes through the uplinks now it is in d3 a6 and coming to pc6 and sending back right d2 a1 and pc1 yes yes now here we have two questions and notice that the arp replay from pc6 travels back along one path yes we have seen that why yeah obviously it is the only valid path when stp is blocking the redundant links record the loop free path between pc1 and pc6 yes here we have seen that pc1 then a1 then it goes to d2 then c1 then it goes to d3 then a6 and finally pc6 now we will come to uh, step 3 examine the arp process again right so below the scenario 0 drop down list click new to create scenario 1 examine the arp process again by pinging between uh, two different pcs so we can select any two pc right so here we are going to change the scenario here we can see that we are going to click new right we are going to select this uh, add a simple pdu here i am going to send from pc2 to pc5 then we will uh, see the path capture or forward it goes to a2 capture or forward it goes to d2 capture or forward oh it's an arp so broadcast right broadcast so the message reaches to pc5 right so it sends the mac address back to pc2 from this uh, pc5 here we can see that yes it goes back yes now they are going to send the icmp here we can see that yes now here we can see it goes the device a2 the device d2 the device c1 then d3 then f5 and finally to pc5 now it sends back to pc2 through the same path yes here the question is so what part of the path changed from the last set of pings yes so uh, we we here we have done the ping from pc2 to pc5 uh, you may select uh, different pcs here we can see uh, it uh, went through uh, the devices uh, A2, then D2, uh, C1, D3, then it went to A5, then to PC5. Now we will come to uh, part 3. Test redundancy in a switched network. Step 1. I'll delete the link between A1 and D2. Switch to real-time mode. I'll delete the link between A1 and D2. It takes some time for STP2 coverage and establish a new loop-free path because only A1 is affected. But for the amber light on the link between A1 and D1 to change to green, uh, you can click fast-forward time to accelerate the STP convergence process. Right. Coming to the topology, here we are going to uh, switch to real-time mode yes now here uh, we are going to uh, delete the link between a1 and d2 here we can see that a1 and d2 we are going to delete this uplink right yes now we have to uh, wait for uh, this link to be up so we will give a, a fast forward time and we can see that this link is going to be up yes here we can see that coming to uh, step 2 ping between pc1 and pc6 after the link between a1 and d1 is active indicated by a green light yes here we can see that right 
switch to simulation mode and create scenario 2 ping between PC1 and PC6 again. So I record the new loop free path. Coming to the topology, we are going to switch from real time to a simulation mode. Here we can see our visible events ARP and ICMP. We are going to create uh, the new scenario. Yes, we are going to select this uh, symbol PDU from PC1 to PC6. And we are going to click capture or forward. And here we can see uh, the path goes to A1, then D1, goes to C1, then it goes to D3, then it goes to A6, and finally PC6. Then it goes back to PC1 through the same uh, devices. Yes. Now we will come to uh, step 3, delete link between C1 and D3, uh, switch to real time mode, notice that the links between D3 and D4 uh, to C2 are amber, so delete the link between C1 and D3, it takes some time for STP to converge and establish a new loop free path, watch the amber links on D3 and D4. You can click fast forward time to accelerate the STP convergence process. So which link is now the active link to C2? Right, so we will do this now. Coming to the topology, here we are going to switch from simulation mode to real time, right? And here we can see the links between D3 and D4 to this uh, C2 is uh, in amber. Yes, here we can see that. Also, here we can see the connection from C1 to D3. Uh, it is an active uplink. We are going to delete this uplink, right? We are going to delete from C1 to D3. This link we are going to delete. Yes. So now what happens? Obviously, the link between this D3 and C2 should be, it is going to become an active uplink, right? So we will give fast forward time. Yes, here we can see that. So uh, this uh, D3 uh, fast third zero slash one and uh, C2 fast third zero slash two is now active link. Now we will come to uh, step four, a ping between PC1 and PC6. So switch to simulation mode and create scenario three, ping between PC1 and PC6. Then record the new loop free path. Coming to the topology, here we are going to switch from real time to uh, simulation mode. Here is our uh, visible events ARP and ICMP. Right here we are going to give the new scenario. Right. So here we are going to select this uh, uh, the symbol PDU and we are going, send, going to send from PC1 to PC6. Now we will give this a capture or forward option. It goes to A1, D1. Now here we can see it goes to C1. It goes to D4, A6, and finally it goes to PC6. So it's sent back to through the same path. Right. Now we will come to uh, step 5, delete D4, switch to real time mode, notice that A4, A5 and A6 are all forwarding traffic to D4, delete D4, it takes some time for STP to converge and establish a new loop free path, watch for the links between A4, A5 and A6 to D3, transition to forwarding, that is green, all three switches should now be forwarding to D3. Right. Coming to the topology, we are going to switch from simulation mode to real time. And uh, here we can see uh, the switches A4, A5 and A6 are forwarding traffic to D4. Here we can see that. Yes. So now what we are going to do, here we are going to delete this uh, switch D4. Right. Yes. Now here we can see all these A4, A5 and A6 uh, should uh, forward to uh, D3. 
so we will give fast forward time here yes here we can see that coming to uh, step 6 ping between pc1 and pc6 switch to simulation mode and create scenario 4 a ping between pc1 and pc6 record the new loop free path what is unique about the new path that you have not seen before right we will check that coming to the topology here we are going to switch from real time to simulation mode and here we can see the visible events arp and icmp right we are going to create the new scenario and a simple pdu from pc1 to pc6 now we will give a capture or forward it goes to a1 d1 c1 c2 then goes to d3 a6 and finally to pc6 it acknowledges through the same path right here uh, we have seen one question what is unique about the new path that you have not seen before yes coming to topology if you observe uh, this uh, c2 here we can see no redundant path below this uh, switch c2 now we will come to uh, step 7 delete c1 uh, switch to real time mode notice that d1 and d2 are both forwarding traffic to c1 now we are going to delete c1 it takes some time for stp to converge and establish a new loop free path watch for the links between d1 and d2 to c2 to transition to forwarding once converged both switches should now be forwarding to c2 right coming to the topology we are going to switch from simulation mode to real time mode and here we can see the switches d1 and d2 are both forwarding traffic to c1 yes here we can see that now what we are going to do we are going to delete this switch c1 right so we will uh, wait for the convergence or here we can give this a uh, fast forward time yes now here we can see this uh, d1 and d2 uh, both forwarding traffic to c2 yes coming to the last step ping between pc1 and pc6 switch to simulation mode and create a scenario 5 ping between pc1 and pc6 then record the new loop free path coming to the topology from real time to simulation mode and here is our visible events arp and icmp right we are going to create the new scenario now we are going to send from PC1 to PC6. Now we are going to click capture or forward. Goes to A1, D1, then it goes to C2, D3, A6, and it goes to PC6. And also we can see it goes through the same path. Back to PC1. Right. Yes. So that's all in this packet tracer activity. Uh, here uh, we have seen uh, we check the STP convergence, then we examine the ARP process, and finally we test the redundancy in a suture network. Friends, for more videos, you can subscribe the channel so that you will get latest uploading video info into our Gmail. Thank you.